Hello, good evening to you. Welcome to News 360 and it's live on News Up here at Adesawe in Kanda. My name is Alfred Okanse. And I'm Natalie Fort. A look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paid, GT Bank, and Calipo. Supreme Court suspends ruling on disputed Woyome UT Bank properties. Minority in Parliament demands the arrest and prosecution of Member of Parliament for Sin Central Kennedy a Japan over the murder of investigative journalist Ahmed Hussein Swale. Also ahead this evening, terrified students of Academy of Christ Senior High School in Cape Coast call on government and other stakeholders to come to their aid following death threats by alleged encroachers of the school's lands. And in business tonight, econom energy economist and political risk analyst Dr. Theophilus Champon urges the Ministry of Energy to bring various regulators in the energy sector together. On the international front this evening, Zimbabwe's opposition says its members have been victims of a brutal crackdown in response to violent protests against a sharp rise in the price of fuel. Stay with us here on News 360 for the details of these stories and much more news. As always, you can watch us on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Absolutely. And we're live on DSTV channel 279. Let's get live and interactive tonight. Our first story this evening, the Supreme Court has held on to its judgment after an application made by a lawyer for businessman seeking a review of a Supreme Court decision on ownership of properties worth 23 million cities uh, said to be belonging to Alfred Wyoming. The apex court is to determine whether or not the said property belonged to Alfred Abashi Wyoming or the defunct UT Bank. The state is pursuing the sale of the property to defray the 52 million cities owed the state by businessman Alfred Agbesi Woyome, which he was wrongfully paid in 2009. Lawyers of the businessman are calling for a review resulting in the court withholding the judgment that says the court can determine whether the disputed property belonged to Woyome or not. The decision of the Supreme Court was taken in December 2018 by the sole judge Justice Anthony Benin. Receivers of the defunct UT Bank went to court after the Attorney General earmarked for sale some property they claim belongs to them. The property meant to defray the debt were challenged in court by receivers of the defunct UT Bank who are claiming ownership of the residential facilities located at Trasaco Valley Estates in Accra, Newtown. A Deputy Attorney General, Godfrey Yobo Adame, had alleged the receivers were colluding with the businessman to prevent the state from selling off the property to defray the debt. He stressed the businessman used the property as collateral to secure a loan in excess of 9 million cities nine months after UT Bank is said to have bought the property. Well, let's head to Parliament now as the minority in Parliament has called for the arrest and prosecution of MP for Asin Central, Kennedy Ejipong, over the murder of investigative journalist Ahmed Hussein Swali. According to the minority, per Section 20, Clause 1 of the Criminal and Other Offences Act, Kennedy Ejipong has abetted several offences and bears some criminal responsibility over Swali's death. The minority condemned the killing of the investigative journalist and described it as an attack on press freedom and free expression in the country and urged the media not to be cowed by the act. The ranking member of the Defense and Interior Committee, James Agalga, said per Article 20, Clause 1 of the Criminal and Other Offences Act, Kennedy Ejapong is liable to some criminal responsibility for the death of Ahmed Swale. Mr. Ejapong appears to have abetted several offenses, ranging from assault, causing harm with the use of an offensive weapon, attempted murder, a murder by instigating the public, by reaching out to the public to visit the indicated violence on them. And by the operation of our law, the offense of abetting the crime through instigating violence is committed, even if 
no member of the public lifts a finger in furtherance of the invitation. He said the Asen Central MP should have been arrested and prosecuted for the instigation of violence on Ahmed and Anas for monetary reward. In a public show of impunity and bravado, the morning immediately following Ahmed's assassination, Mr. Japong went from one radio station to another, daring law enforcement agencies to arrest him. True. He went to the extent of preposterously accusing Mr. Nas and the lawyer for Tiger Eye PI, Mr. Kisi Ajabain, of complicity in Ahmed's death while raining insults and invectives on them. The minority also chastised the security agencies for their failure to take action on the said MP and allowed him to leave the country. The conduct of Mr. Japong could not have escaped the notice of law enforcement agencies and the government of President Akufado. Until date, he has not been invited by the police for questioning. We find this situation deeply worrying and uncharacteristic of a democratic and civilized country. Mr. Japong's conduct and the obvious lack of action by the law enforcement agencies leads to only one conclusion, that Mr. Japong is above the laws of Ghana and he enjoys impunity free from prosecution. James Agalga expressed disappointment over government's failure to condemn what he called reckless utterances by Kennedy e. Japong and served notice that a minority would commence processes to drag the Asun Central MP before the Privileges Committee once again for sanctions when the House resumes from recess. The group also bemoaned the space of contract killings in recent times and urged government to put in measures to save the Ghanaian people from living in fear. Natalie, after this particular press conference, uh, the police has been responding to yeah. uh, the claims by the minority. So there's a statement that's just come through from the Public Affairs Directorate of the Ghana Police Service. I'm just going to read a, a brief of it. And uh, it says that update on the murder of Ahmed Hussein Swale, the Criminal Investigations Department CID of the Ghana Police Service, has uh, commenced extensive and rigorous investigations into the unfortunate killing of Mr. Ahmed Swale. The point two, actually, which is of emphasis, says a brief update of the investigations as follows. A, a team of detectives and other experts have interrogated Honorable Kennedy, a Japan member of parliament for Asin Central, and a statement has been taken from him. So this particular statement from the police is indicating that Kennedy, a Japan has been interrogated uh, by the police. B, a team of detectives and other experts have interrogated Kwesin Yantichi, former president of the Ghana Football Association, and a statement has also been taken from him as well. C, the CID and continues to interrogate, I beg your pardon, interrogate, other persons of interest as well as uh, following up on multiple significant leads that is on a point C of this particular statement. It finally says that the CID commits to a, a thorough investigation of the high uh, integrity in this case in particular and all other unresolved crimes in general. So that's a statement that's coming through from uh, the Ghana Police Service signed by David Eklou, who is Assistant Commissioner of Police and Director of General uh, in Charge of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service. So that's an update to it, responding to some of the issues that the minority raised in their press conference earlier in the day. But the National Commission for Civic Education has also waded in into this. They are demanding that the police conduct swiftly invest. wants the police service to liaise with other uh, security organizations to bring perpetrators to book. Recent killings over the past few months have become a source of concern. All four persons who died over a two-month period were assassinated. On December 13 last year, for instance, the Mankralo of Pram Pram in the Greater Accra region, Nene Achu Benta III, was shot dead by unknown gunmen at Dodua in the Shai Osudoku district. He was returning to Pram Pram for a meeting at the Dodua House of Chiefs. 
fast forward to December 30, an Assemblies of God pastor was also stabbed to death by his nephew at his church in Tema. In January this year alone, two more persons have been killed. First, the public affairs manager of the Ghana Ports and Harbour Authority, Josephine Asante, stabbed to death, followed by the gruesome murder of investigative journalist Ahmed Hussein Swale at Medina. The killing of the journalist, who was shot three times, has in particular triggered discussions over the safety of journalists. Chairperson of the NCC, Josephine Nkrumah, warns the police to intensify its investigations. I think we've had a bit of a communication gap, but at least something that comes from the police to, to let us understand that they are on top of the situation or investigations are ongoing is essential for all of us to sleep sound and know that our police are up to the task and they are doing their utmost best. She believes the killing of the investigative journalist is an affront to the fight against corruption. Investigative journalism is beginning to have a direct correlation to um, the fight against corruption in this country. So for investigative journalism, we should do everything we can to encourage that kind of journalism in further entrenching democracy in our country. Why are you very dangerous? What you might do now? Many, including Anas Arimi Anas, who worked closely with Ahmed Swale since his death, have shared a video on social media in attempt to link a sin central MP, Kennedy Japan, to it, with a call on the police to arrest and interrogate him. But the NCCE is being cautious in the scheme of events. Anyone that the police thinks ought to be invited should be invited and that person should submit to the police and answer questions that the police will legitimately pose to them. I mean, he's saying that the journalist in question should be beaten whatever is, is found because, and he actually went ahead to put a bounty on the journalist. Don't you think this could have incited people to, um, to attack the said journalist. And apart from that, going to show the image of the, the person on TV, don't you think this was quite extreme? I would reserve my comments and leave the police to do their work. You don't want to comment? No comments. Amidst the general safety concerns, the Interior Ministry, in its last encounter with the media, assured of adequate security, insisting they should not be pressured as they work to ensure safety for all. Let's turn to some other stories this evening. As the Volta Regional Police Commander, DCOP Francis Ebenezer Doku, and his staff officer, DSP Meza Clay, have both been transferred with immediate effect. No reasons were assigned in the transfer letter, which was signed by the Inspector General of Police, David Asante Apietu, on Monday, January 21. The Volta Regional Police Commander is on record to have asked journalists to stay away from polling centers during the recently held referendum in the proposed OT region for their own safety. DCOP Francis Ebenezer Doku again told journalists in Ho on January 17 that Alavano is a leader in stockpiling and manufacturer of weapons in West Africa. Are you going to record me? You see this part? No, I'm only telling you to tell the people you meet. I'm not going to be speaking across the table. And even West Africa. If you don't have that part, I am telling you. As we speak, there are people who go there on duty to guard the manufacturing base. So as weapons are being imported into Alabama, they themselves are manufacturing weapons. What are they manufacturing the weapons for? To go and kill grass cutters. Their target is human beings like you and I. So they will do all out to defend their position. And I'm surprised some of you listening to what they tell you, more than what we tell you. Look, there is a stop, there is a location that we have identified where over 70 AK 47 are being kept. In Alaba? Yes. It's new. It's been there for some time now. AK-47 assault rifles are being kept in Alabama. In Alabama. Okay. But the chief, if you count here today, will tell you that there is not even a single AK-47 in this area. Maybe he's not aware. Uh, if the police are aware, why would you go in for them? Maybe he's not aware of it. 
What are you waiting for? I mean, this is your security <laughs> issue, no? <laughs> so if we begin to pick one by one, I will not reduce the numbers. Mm. Will they allow us to do that? They will put all, all manner of defense because they have an interest. Left front center. <laughs> eh? Yes, yeah, they, no, the Dutch station has this slogan, first in the news, best in the news. And AM, they started calling me. Oh my goodness. Why? All said and done, I will have enjoyed your coffee. But DCOP Doku, proud to him being recalled to the police headquarters as Director General of Special Duties, issued a disclaimer Monday morning describing the publication of the story as fake. Both transfers take effect immediately. So indeed, this particular statement, as controversial as it is uh, from, from this particular police personnel, has uh, triggered, according to some analysis, this particular development of him being transferred. Keep an eye on this and his description as what we we're saying as fake, but President Kufuado is saying it's time for Ghana to develop policies, uh, policies, I beg your pardon, that would make her self-reliant, less dependent on foreign capital, technology, and also influence. He was addressing a conference on bridging the technological gap at Pediasi in the eastern region. The two-day conference is under the auspices of the MasterCard Foundation in collaboration with the Ghana Institution of Engineers and the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. President of the Ghana Institution of Engineers, Stephen Mwenin Yangsin, observed foreign expertise who offer technological solutions that can be handled locally by Ghanaians must be halted if the country is serious about bridging the technology gap. Foreign expertise, in addition to being expensive, is a source of continued dependency. Furthermore, our success in creating wealth and reducing poverty depends on our ability to apply the four attributes of science, technology, engineering, and innovation as the key drivers of our development. President Kufado said it is time for Ghana to develop policies to make her self-reliant, less dependent on foreign technology and influence. We have not developed well enough our abilities to find domestic solutions to our problems and we continue to live on the habit of seeking solutions from outside sources, most of the time with products made from the exploitation of our own natural resources. It is important to state that we can no longer continue to make policies for our country on the basis of whatever support the technologically advanced world can give us. It has not worked, and it will not work. The president noted that his vision of Ghana Beyond Aid is to build a strong, robust economy capable of generating dignified, prosperous existence for its people and banishing the scepter of poverty. President Kofaro indicated that his administration, through the Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, has developed a science and technology framework to bridge the technology gap between Ghana and the rest of the world. Topics to be discussed include the technology gap in Ghana, insight from the civil engineering experience, challenges and opportunities, challenges and opportunities in the manufacturing sector, and the VACO experience. Watching News 360, let's now turn to our MTN Vid reports this evening as our citizen journalist Fatal Seydou reports on the poor state of roads in the northern region. This is Mr. Fatal Seydou from Malui reporting on the bad nature of the road in Bole, Bamboy district specifically. As you can see, this road has been deteriorated for the past days. As you are seeing, the whole of this place is within Waka Waka and the Sapa area. These are the potholes in the main road which are causing severe accident. This car has hit on the road 
on the pothole and she has blast two of his ties. He cannot move again. I'm pressed. It, it, it continues. As I'm moving along, you are seeing how the road is very bad. We are pleading on the government and any private agency who can help should please help us and solve our problem. It's live here on News 360, still to come in the bulletin tonight. Terrified students of Academy of Christ Senior High School in Cape Coast call on government and other stakeholders to come to their aid following death threats by alleged encroachers of the school's lands. Energy economist and political risk analyst Dr. Theophilos Echampon urges the Minister of Energy to bring various regulators in the energy sector together. On the international front, Zimbabwe's opposition says its members have been victims of a brutal crackdown in response to violent protest against a sharp rise in the price of fuel. We've got these stories shortly here on News 360, starting off with the latest in business. Stay with us. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the business news segment on News 360. My name is Pa Kwesiasari. To begin with, Talo Oil is preparing to drill seven oil wells in the Jubilee and the 10 oil fields this year. The managing director, Kwekwawachi, said the new wells has the potential of increasing the co company's proceeds beyond the $2 billion secured last year. With the activation of the new wells, Talo Ghana expects to generate 180,000 barrels of oil a day, raising its overall gross oil production per 2019 production forecast. Gross production from Jubilee in 2018 averaged 78,000 barrels of oil per day, slightly below the group's November forecast. This was due to minor operational issues in December, which is managing director Kwekwa Wachi says have been resolved. Our production numbers are up. Uh, we've resumed our well drilling campaign and um, most importantly, or as importantly, we've completed the repair works on the turret that failed in 2016. Um, added to the fact that oil prices have been higher than um, predicted, uh, financially we've also done very well. Talo expects 2019 average gross oil production from the Jubilee field to increase to around 96,000 barrels of oil per day. Uh, we expect to increase production to up to 180,000 barrels a day. And um, we, we hope that um, we'll continue to have a stable environment. According to Talo, it expects gross oil production from the 10 fields in 2019 to step up significantly to around 83,000. Net production from the non-operated portfolio is expected to increase in 2019 and average between 22,000 and 24,000 barrels of oil per day. Away from the petroleum industry, let's find out what's happening in the telecom sector because MTN Ghana has organized a digital music conference for stakeholders in the music industry in Accra. The music industry has undergone swift and dramatic changes due to emerging technological advancements impacting on recording, distribution and marketing. The MTN Ghana Maiden Digital Music Conference is to help local artists harness the opportunities in the digital space and also create an avenue for stakeholders in the industry to deliberate on ways artists and music producers can keep abreast with emerging digital technology. We brought together people from Universal Music, uh, software and application developers that have apps that this music can be distributed on with a focus on the local um, uh, music and also um, applications that can actually tell artists where their music is even being played um, in the country. Senior Manager of Products and Services, MTN Ghana, Bless Sefenu Agojo express the company's resolve at creating smart and effective methods for musicians to distribute their content. MTN has taken over or has acquired a company called Sim5, which is to take music distribution to a different level. Um, 
one of the things that we are doing is to move away from the, the subscription model where people can actually subscribe based on time. So you subscribe to a music consumption for about an hour, you can use 10 minutes at what point you want and continue to use the rest at, at a different point. Managing Director for Content Connect Ghana entreated musicians to develop a digital strategy to monetize their creativity. Grow your fan base, grow it to such an extent, be known across your region or even region whether it's just for if it's just Ghana it's fine, if it's West Africa it's better, if it's Africa it's best. Be known as much as possible, then these guys we've got the muscle to take you to another level. They will approach you, they will want to work with you to take you to the next level. Director of Communications and Special Projects of the Musicians Union of Ghana, Ahuma Okansi, commended MTN Ghana for the initiative and urged stakeholders in the industry to leverage the opportunities created through emerging technologies. In other news, a portion of the Odona market, which was not affected by Wednesday's Wednesday night's fire, has been opened. This was after a visit by officials of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly and the National Disaster Management Organization on Monday. My colleague Ajua Adobia Owusu reports. Today marks exactly five days since the Odona market was gutted by fire. This left over 80 shops destroyed, leaving traders in shock. The market was since closed till today when the AMA and NADMO officials met the traders to speak to them about what plans they have for them. The Odona market was gutted by fire on Wednesday, January 16. The fire which started at about 8 p.m. is believed to have been caused by an illegal electrical connection. Angry traders blame the Ghana National Fire Service for not paying swift attention to their calls. The market was subsequently closed down to prevent criminals from taking advantage of the situation to loot. But the traders say their stay at home since Thursday has been to their disadvantage. No matter what it is, we have to cope with the situation on the ground now. Actually, if you don't have anything at home, then you have to go in for bolloring in order to survive. The family has to survive with it. Other than that, there's nothing more that we can do. Terrible, terrible. You know, the children, how they will go to school, how they eat. You know, daddy, you know. It's not that I will express my husband. You have to understand. They say you need to talk again, Sam. Today, yes, let me say. We are calling on government and non governmental organizations to come to our aid. The director of the inspectorate department of the National Disaster Management Organization. Richard Amoyati says authorities are in talks with traders to address their challenges. The NADMO has been monitoring the situation after the fire incident. And as my boss put it out last week, after the initial assessment, that the place should remain closed until today when we have done enough assessment to determine the way forward. So I'm happy to announce that after a meeting this morning with stakeholders, that part of the market which was not affected, it's been reopened for use. And then the area that was affected will remain closed until the final investigations and assessment are complete. Meanwhile, authorities are yet to take a decision on whether or not to compensate affected traders. That's all for the very latest in the in business news. My name is Park with Yasari. Thanks very much for watching. For more business news stories, do log on to our website, www.3news.com. Over to you, Alfred. Thank you, Park with Business. There's some disturbances in the issues with the students of Academy of Christ Senior High School in Cape Coast in the Central Region. They actually aborted a planned boycott of classes following death threats by encroachers of the school's lands after the Central Regional Minister and the Police Commander intervened to assure them of protection. Our Central Regional Correspondent, Thomas Vincent Khan, has come through with the following report. The recent development was sparked by the pulling down of a fence wall being constructed by the school to protect the school lands. Students of the school say they do not feel safe because of constant death threat from some of the encroachers who have allegedly taken over the school's land. Terrified students called on government and other stakeholders to come to the aid of the school. The Central Regional Minister Kwame Duncan 
and his deputy Thomas J. Bafo, together with the Central Regional Police Commander DCOP Paul Manley Awini, were at the school on Monday morning to assess the situation. Headmistress of the school Florence Ofer said the current situation is life threatening as notices of death threats have been posted at the campus. We've been talking to them and telling them uh, not to walk individually into to move in groups because these people are all around you know the school is not walled and the the entrances exits whatever are too many the bushes around whatever so we tell them to move in groups the central regional minister Kwame Duncan promised to ensure the issue is resolved Academy of Christ the King Senior High School, established over 40 years ago as a day school, now has an enrollment of about 1,700 students. The increase in population influenced its relocation to its current site at Abra. Since its expansion, the authorities have been battling with encroachment, which even led to an earlier demonstration by students who were attacked and assaulted by some encroachers. Rather worrying one there. You're watching News 360. Stay with us. We've got the latest in sports coming up with Theory Nan shortly. Hello, good evening. It's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Quedrado. Now, moving on to the very first story for tonight. The director of communications of the Melcom Group, Godwin Avenable, has called for proper structures uh, to support the art of disc jockeying in promoting the entertainment industry. The former broadcaster and disc jockey made this statement at the annual 2018 DJ Cypher. <laughs> fuse artists' creative works into an endless repertoire of songs. The awards seek to recognize DJs for their tremendous contributions to the entertainment industry. <laughs> The preparation towards this year's event started with DJ Cypher, a mini event which brings together top disc jockeys to entertain the public. <laughs> DJ Switch's performance was spectacular. She expressed confidence in winning the female category. <laughs> God who does everything, but I'm praying to God I get the best female DJ of the year. Praying to God I get, you know, it's, it's different awards. So, you know, God is the one who decides for you. So, God will decide. Director of Communications of the Malcolm Group and former disc jockey Godwin Avenogbo called for proper structures to support the act. We should not aim at the international market, but we should grow a DJ market for the local market. There's so much entertainment opportunities in this country that the DJs can feel. So the local market should be able to absorb the capacity that the DJs have. There are few live bands now you can use for shows. Institutional bands are available, the police, the armed forces, and a few others. Other than that, it's the DJs who fill the gap and they do it so well. We need to encourage them. The event was spiced up by musical performances from Lynx Entertainment signee Kwame Yuji. And so that was actually a 2019 DJ Cypher held at Melcom uh, as part of the Ghana DJ Awards that's coming up. And that's how we wrap up tonight's edition of News 360 Entertainment's New Segment with me and Anakwe Jado, Alfred and Nat. Yeah, yes, we can't yeah, have enough you. of DJ Switch. I know, she makes me excited. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's great to watch her as always. But I want to say thank you on behalf of the rest of the team. My name is Alfred Okonsi. I'm Natalie Ford. Visit our website. It's 3news.com for a lot more news. Thanks so much for watching and have a great evening.